Now, beginning with chapter 4 through 22, it's future. He says, you are to write the things about to be after these things. And that's very important. The Greek metatauta, after these things. What things? After the church things. So that beginning with chapter 4, you're dealing with things that are going to take place after the church leaves the earth. And that is the great fallacy of the hour of reaching over into the book of Revelation, beginning with chapter 4, and trying to pull those things up to the present. And that's the reason we have all of this wild and weird interpretation today. Why don't we follow what John tells us? He says, here's my outline. Now, he says, follow it. Write the things which you have seen, the things which are, the things which are going to be metatauta, after these things. And John's going to let you know when he gets to metatauta. He's going to begin chapter 4, the things after these things, so that you can't miss it unless you've got a system of interpretation that just won't fit in at the book of Revelation. And if it doesn't, then you're going to have your problem. Now, we must keep in mind the Lord Jesus Christ is back of everything that takes place in this book. He's in full charge. He's the glorified Christ. Oh, that you and I might see him today. Now, I have attempted to give certain divisions of this book in many different ways. I've divided it into the division John has given us. And in chapter 1, the person of Jesus Christ, Christ in glory. Then chapters 2 and 3, the possession of Not first the person of Jesus Christ, then the possession of Jesus Christ. That's his church. That's his church. That he loved the church. He gave himself for it, that it might be his. And then you have in chapters 2 and 3 the church, but it's his church. And then the program of Jesus Christ, the scene in heaven, chapters 4 through 22, that's the consummation of all things on this earth. That's the thing that makes this book here such a glorious, wonderful book, if you please. When we finish the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, we attempted to tie it into the book of Revelation because we believe there was that tie in there as the Old Testament and Malachi closes with the Son of Righteousness yet to rise. It holds out a hope for a cursed earth and where the curse of sin is, that he's coming to the earth. And the book of Revelation closes with the bright and morning star and an invitation to the church. Well, the fact of the matter is that's the hope of the church, is the rapture. And the hope of the Old Testament is the revelation. Now, this book will complete the revelation But I want to tie in today the book of Revelation with Genesis, the first book of the Bible, the first book and the last book of the Bible. Genesis presents the beginning, and Revelation presents the end. We find all is contrast here. The earth is created in Genesis. In Revelation, the earth passed away. In Genesis, Satan's first rebellion. In Revelation, Satan's last rebellion. In Genesis, the sun, moon, and stars for earth's government. And in Revelation, these same heavenly bodies are for earth's judgment. And in Genesis, the sun was to govern the day. In Revelation, there's no need of the sun. In Genesis, darkness was called night. In Revelation, there's no night there. In Genesis, the waters are called seas. In Revelation, there's no more seas. In Genesis, we have the entrance of sin. In Revelation, the exodus of sin. In Genesis, a curse is pronounced. In Revelation, the curse is removed. In Genesis, death enters. In Revelation, there's no more death. In Genesis, sorrow and suffering. And in Revelation... No more sorrow and no more tears. In Genesis, we have the marriage of the first Adam. In Revelation, the marriage of the last Adam. 
In Genesis, we see man's city, Babylon. In Revelation, we see man's city, Babylon, destroyed, and God's city brought into view, the new Jerusalem. In Genesis, we have the doom of Satan pronounced, and here in Revelation, his doom executed. We last time attempted to call your attention to the outline of this book, and that John actually outlines it for us. He was told to write the things which thou hast seen, that's the past, and the things which are, and that's church things, that's in Revelation 2 and 3. And then we have the things which shall be hereafter, or metatata, after these things. And those are the things that concern the future, so that when we're dealing with the church in Revelation 2 and 3, we're dealing with present-day things. But when you come to chapter 4, everything is... 